Hello, ISTE 2013. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you in person in San Antonio. My name is James Welsh, and I'm from the Florida Center for Instructional Technology. I'm going to introduce you to the technology integration matrix, and I'll describe some evaluation tools that we've developed to complement the TIM. The technology integration matrix, or the TIM, is a model that provides a common language for describing and evaluating technology integration in K-12 settings. The TIM describes five attributes of meaningful learning environments across five levels of technology integration. Um, the TIM specifically focuses on pedagogy and the pedagogical approach you use to technology integration. It's not specific to hardware or software or lessons, although it includes a lot of examples uh, uh, of all of those things. So to start with, let's talk about those five levels. The levels are entry, adoption, adaptation, infusion, and transformation. The levels were adapted from the ACOT studies, and they've been described in further detail as a result of the observations, the interviews, and the survey work that we've done here in Florida schools. These five levels represent a continuum of technology use. Now, as we move toward the right on the TIM, uh, we see some general differences in the way technology is used. The most important difference is that, in general, as we move toward the right, we see greater student ownership of learning. We expect an entry-level lesson to be teacher-focused and teacher-driven, while a transformation-level lesson uh, is more likely, much more likely, to be student-centered, uh, with students making meaningful and informed decisions, and, and a lot of times strategic choices about the way that technology is used. So the students are much more in the driver's seat, and they're much more in ownership of their own learning. Uh, another difference involves a shift from in the focus from, of typical lessons from procedural understandings toward conceptual understandings. You can also think about this shift as a shift toward higher order thinking and, and building higher order thinking skills. We also see general differences in the ways in which technology tools are used. An entry-level lesson is a lot more likely to involve simple, conventional use of technology tools, regardless of which technology tools we're talking about. Uh, the use of them is much more likely to be conventional. Um, and as we move toward transformation level, um, you're much more likely to see unconventional or innovative or complex uses of technology tools. Um, incidentally, one of the studies that we're working on right now shows some striking evidence of an order of adoption of technology tools among teachers. So in other words, if you tell me what technologies a teacher is using currently, I can tell you the most likely tools that that teacher will be willing to adopt in the near future. Um, we believe that that can be a really crucial piece of information in focusing professional development efforts. Um, finally, the instructional focus shifts away from the tools and toward the content. So in an entry-level lesson that involves tablet computers, for instance, I might uh, want to build in some time to teach students about the new tools, how to handle them and how to power them off and things like that. Um, whereas at a transformation level lesson using tablet computers, we aren't going to be talking about the tablets at all. Uh, the technology becomes more transparent and the focus is more clearly on the content alone. So that gives you a brief description of the levels of technology integration that we see across the top of the TIM. These levels are similar to the levels described in the SAMR model. Um, the difference is, well, one difference is that in the SAMR model you have four levels, and in the, in the TIM you have five levels. Um, we differentiate a little bit at the, at the upper end. I think that the first three levels probably track pretty closely with the first three levels of SAMR, and we have a little bit more differentiation at the top end between infusion and transformation. Um, the other key difference is that the TIM takes those levels and then describes them across five attributes of meaningful learning environments. So uh, just briefly, let's take a look at what those, meaning, what those um, attributes are. Um, there we're talking about active, collaborative, constructive, authentic, and goal-directed learning and teaching. Um, these are based on a variety of different studies, including prominently including the work of David Jonathan. Um, I'm going to refer you to the TIM website, mytechmatrix.org, where you can get more information about each of these characteristics 
and how each characteristic changes across the levels of technology integration. Um, on the TIM website, um, we have detailed within each cell of the matrix descriptions of uh, what typical teacher behavior looks like, what typical student behavior looks like, and the details of what the learning environment supports inside each of those 25 cells. Um, we've also included videos, and, and that's um, a, a kind of significant. We have 100 videos currently on the site um, linked from the matrix. Uh, four videos within each cell, and those videos, in addition to all the text descriptors uh, that have been generated from uh, a variety of different uh, observations and focus groups and interviews and surveys, um, we've uh, provided these hundred videos that are keyed to the matrix. And those give specific examples of lessons in classrooms from kindergarten through 12th grade and across, uh, um, right now, across four different subject areas. Um, the matrix, as I said, currently includes 100 classroom video lessons. Um, we are in the process right now of adding another 50 videos. These new 50 that we're adding will all focus on tablet computers in the classroom, and uh, half of them will be math lessons and half of them will be science lessons. Um, so th in the near future, we'll have 150 videos uh, that link from the matrix that give specific examples of what classrooms look like at these different levels within these different characteristics. Um, now I'd like to shift and talk a little bit about the evaluation tools that we've developed. Um, we have developed and continue to develop a suite called uh, TIM Tools. These are evaluation tools that look at classroom technology integration in a variety of different ways. You're looking right now at a screenshot from the main menu of a district TIM Tools uh, uh, instance. Um, this is a web-based, database-driven system that's available for an annual subscription from our website, mytech, mytechmatrix.org. Um, the suite includes a classroom observation tool that guides an observer through the process uh, of, of doing an observation that ends up with a, pro, a profile of the lesson that you've observed um, in terms of the technology integration matrix. Um, it talks about how technology is being, being used in collaborative ways, in authentic ways, in goal-directed ways within the classroom that you've observed. Um, this observation tool, by the way, works really well as a teacher self-study tool. Um, and it works great on mobile devices. It'll work on any mobile device, including iOS devices. Um, so as an observation tool, um, it can be useful whether you're doing observations at the district level, at the school level, or if teachers are using it within um, lesson study groups or self-study groups, uh, um, looking at their own practice. Um, another of the tools that is included in this suite is uh, listed here as technology uses and perceptions. Um, that is a survey tool. The TUPS is what we call it, the Technology Uses and Perception Survey. It's a teacher survey tool, and it incl includes over 200 items in seven different areas. The TUPS looks at what teachers believe about the role of technology in the classroom, as well as their comfort and confidence with technology in general, with pedagogy of technology, with a variety of different specific technologies. And it also asks about the frequency that they use those technologies and the frequency with which their students use those technologies. Um, it's, a, it's a really powerful sort of uh, survey tool that, that gives a variety of different information. Um, and then finally, I'll talk about the top one on that list, Action Research. Um, that is specifically an action research tool um, around technology integration questions. Uh, it guides teachers through uh, professional learning inquiry projects. Teachers identify the changes that they want to make in their classrooms, they pose questions, they collect data, and they draw conclusions based on that data. So we see these three tools um, working together in very specific ways. Uh, the Technology Uses and Perception Survey is about gauging readiness. It's about establishing a baseline for comparison. It's uh, about identifying trends. And it's really great for pre and post uh, data for any kind of a project or, or on, any kind of an ongoing uh, professional development uh, situation. Um, and that data gives you sort of baseline comparison data that then you can look at in other ways. The TIMO, the observation tool, gives you data about what's actually happening in classrooms. 
terms. Um, and that specific information can give you uh, information to target other kinds of professional development. This is a formative tool. Um, so you can use this as a basis for teacher feedback. Um, and again, this does not have to be uh, driven from a top top down a top down model. This works really well as a, a teacher driven teacher implemented tool uh, for for um, for professional development. And then finally, that action research for technology integration or ARDI is a teacher directed inquiry tool uh, that empowers teachers to make change and it allows them to pull in the data that they have from the TUPS and from the TIMO. Uh, to set specific goals for their own classroom and uh, ask questions that relate to the way technology is used in their classroom. Um, and all of these tools, the data from all of these tools can be aggregated at the school level, at the zone level, or the district level. And you can set up as many zones within a district as you'd like. Some districts do it geographically, some districts do it uh, by grade level uh, of the school. Um, and then uh, the, at the district level, of course, everything uh, bubbles up to the district level. Um, so these can support, obviously, as I've said, teacher-centered or teacher-driven uh, professional development as well as a more traditional top-down model. Uh, and that is a basic introduction to the technology integration matrix and the tools that we've developed uh, to evaluate uh, uh, progress on the technology integration matrix. Uh, again, my name is James Welsh. My email address is on the screen. Please feel free to uh, email me with any questions about the matrix or about the TIM tools. Um, and thank you very much for your time.